once more to the five-year mission. Star Trek Strange New World Season 2! This, yeah, it's been a while since I've tried to watch a Star Trek show uh, as it aired. I did my review for Season 1 a little bit back. I didn't catch that one as it aired, um, but I did like it after I saw it. And the new season started, and it's, it's a solid start. It's not an amazing start, although admittedly the first episode of the first season wasn't an amazing episode either. But it was also solid. This does more or less what it needed to do. Just get you back into the feel of this particular crew and give us a sense of uh, a new person who has joined the crew. So I had wondered, the obvious thing would have been, so spoiler for the previous season, uh, their head engineer died, which I actually didn't love. I really liked that character, um, so I, I didn't love that they killed him. My assumption was that they were going to bring in Scotty, because obviously as a prequel to the original series of Star Trek, that's who was the head engineer during that, so that would make sense to a certain degree if if the show were to accumulate more of the uh crew that Kirk commanded over time so that seemed logical nope that's uh that's not what's going on so we got Carol Kane that works <laughs> if if you're going to remove a character that i like replacing them with Carol Kane yeah yeah there's also just some interesting oddness to her uh, species. I forget what they say what it was. Now, I don't know if this species is pre-existing in Star Trek or if this is a new thing because there's a lot of Star Trek I've... Like, I do consider myself a fan of Star Trek, but I am... I Like, I'm not even close to having seen all of it. Um, so, and there's a lot I don't know. But I'm really kind of intrigued by her. So, uh, she looks human. Uh, which probably... Partially owing to the idea that she probably didn't want to be put in a ton of makeup. Uh, but she's from a species that has an extremely long lifespan that actually was living on Earth undetected for a very, very long time. So, like, imagine if Highlanders didn't have to, didn't feel compelled to kill each other. That's kind, that seems to be kind of what's going on with them. And I, I, I'm hoping this phrasing wasn't accidental. I kind of hope they do something with this. She mentions to Spock, your mother was the first human I came out to. Basically as this, you know, this species, not the same as humans, but obviously living among them. I'm like, there's allegorical places you could take that if you're going to use a phrase like coming out. I'll be keeping an eye on it to see if A, it comes back, uh, and B, if they do good things with it as opposed to mess it up. But at the very least, it's Carol Kane, so that'll take this thing off it a little bit regardless. Very little pike uh, in this one, which, I mean, I suppose that works. Um, and it's not like he wouldn't have done uh, what the remaining crew does. So it's not like they had to remove him to to facilitate the plot. But I think um, giving most of the rest of the cast like a good solid focus um, and with him literally absent, you don't get the question of, wait, why aren't we focusing on the captain? Well, he's busy. We'll get him, don't worry. But like right now, we got this to deal with. And it does do what this kind of thing should do. It's a soft reintroduction to everybody. It's not like going like, hello, you and reintroducing and scrapping everyone's jobs again, but just like seeing these characters in their element and giving you a sense of their quirks again, so that if you haven't rewatched this since the last time it finished airing the first season, you can go like, right, right, okay, cool, cool. And you just ease back into it. It's an effective premiere episode. It's not the kind of premiere episode that like I would watch um, as, as any kind of highlight reel, be like, oh, this is some of the real good stuff. Like, no, but it's good and it's solid. And there is, if I were, if for want of a criticism, I think they overused the slow-mo, especially slow-mo action scenes a bit. Um, it actually felt like they were padding for time a little with how that worked. 
Um, it wasn't it, like it didn't completely kill it, but it was a little bit like that, that's that's happening a lot more than than uh, we need it to. I'm it's impressive to me how at ease I am with the Spock at this point. He's really slipped into it quite well. Um, and you'll have to forgive me because a lot of the names are not sticking in my head right now. Like some of them I could tell you, like Nurse Chapel, although the. Oh, you know, as much as I do like this actor as Spock, could we stop with Spock's love life? I feel like post Leonard Nimoy, there's been a weird kind of obsession with Spock's love life. The the reboot Star Trek movies did it. I don't know if if Discovery did it, but like and now they're doing it here again. Like and they're doing it repeatedly here again. Because Spock has his fiance back on Vulcan, and now he's getting all emotional around Nurse Chapel. And like, if if you're not new around here, I really don't like romantic subplots. I'm not, I'm not gonna say I never like a romantic angle to things, but like, it's not what I'm here for. It's not what I like Spock for. And to whatever degree it can be done interestingly, I think it's already been done. I don't need more of it. So. <sighs> It, it doesn't do anything awful in this episode, but it does feel like, oh, that's going to be a thorn in my side, isn't it? Well, shoot. Um, And uh, we, <laughs> we get some time with the Klingons. It's nice to see just the Klingons chugging some blood wine. I'm down for that. I appreciate that. And, um, you know, it's, it's, they, the crew rescues somebody, it foils a plot. It's, there's there's some space battle shenanigans. It's it's setting the groundwork again. This is a very foundational kind of episode. It's it's sort of a restatement of purpose. This is what we're here to do. We're here to have space adventures with these characters. Here's most of the characters again. Here's the kind of adventure we're going to have. We're not giving you the best of the best right off the bat, but we're setting your expectations. Here's a sample. Cool. It's probably going to end up being a short episode, a uh, short episode, short review on my part, because like I don't I ultimately don't feel like there's that much to really talk about and dig into um, with this particular episode. But I smiled. I smiled seeing these characters again, seeing the interactions, seeing the ship, hearing the music. It's a good time. I uh, I'm I have hopes. I have little doubt that uh, episodes will get better from here because as I said first episode of the first season is also a very foundational episode but this was solid this works I am excited to see what comes next Star Trek Strange New Worlds premiere episode of season two I ultimately didn't have that much to say about it but I am still excited to see more and to talk about it as it airs what did you think of this? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Patreon pays the bills and enables me to do this as my living. Even if you can't help me out that way, there's links to other things down in the description that I do, uh, other platforms you can support me on or just check out what I spend my time doing. But uh, don't worry too much about it. We take a relaxed attitude around here so you can come on back next time you need a break. Massive thanks to my Patreon supporters, and in particular, I want to thank Robin Moore, Zubin Lutfulla, Tarak, the thing that goes doink in the anime, Ruth, Oliver B., Solitary Pictures, Ulrich Bogdan, Melinda Walters, Jen, The Oath of Boyd, Auntie Kate 808, Becky Sparks, Pranabi Likes the Poodle, Robin Powell, Tracy Scrabbit, Angry Casperl, Adam R.D.L. Taylor, David Hall, Shayla Gourlay, and Rosalind Bennett. Thanks for your support. You can get your name in the credits too if you feel like hearing me possibly struggle with it for several times before getting it right. 